it's a rebuild, it's not an original, but it does exactly the same job. As you can see, you've got different colored drums here. Those three drums there are mimicking the Enigma rotors. You've got three rotors in the Enigma machine, that's mimicking them. You'll see they're differently colored. There's a color coding on those rotors. You've normally got five rotors with the Army and Air Force. German Army and Air Force Enigma machine. You've got five, so they're differently colored. The actual rotors themselves have got a Roman numeral stamped on the back. They color coded these so if you didn't make a mistake, you could put the right drum all the way along there. It's not difficult if you're trying to read a Roman number stamped in small letters on the back of something to mistake it. And that would have been disaster. So they had the color code in here. There are in fact eight colors because the German naval enigma had up to uh, eight rotors. But this is basically just the, the five. So you've got the three there differently colored in that particular order. All these rotors as the enigma things are wired differently, of course, inside. But you've got 12 Enigma machines there, and 12 there, and 12 there. So you've got 36 Enigma machines all wrapped up in one. You could actually, because you can choose, um, you've got to choose three out of five rotors in the Enigma machine, you can do that in 60 different ways. So you might have to run 60 different trials on this machine if you've got the right rotor combination. I think you've had it explained to you that that machine, as you press those keys, the rotors move and they've got 17,555 <coughs> different positions. 26 times 26 times 26, that's 17,500. Different positions before you get back to the same setting. What this machine does is in fact to work on the menu, it's not the actual one we've got plugged up, but it uh, does symbolize that. You've got the enciphered message, and you've got a crib, a guess as to what that message might say. Now, that might sound quite difficult. But if it's going to be a weather report, and we knew what the weather was like from where the Germans were sending that, then you might be able to guess some of the words for was here in that message somewhere. So you can build up that crib alongside the actual message. And that's probably a better illustration of that. So you would line up the enciphered text that you intercepted, and you'd line up your crib. And here we have Better for Saga weather message, weather report. So you line those two up. Now you've been told, I'm sure, the Enigma machine cannot encipher a letter as itself. Absolutely impossible <laughs> by the design of it. So if you look at that crib there, um, now where did I set it? Oh, this part. Yeah. If you like that, T and T, that's not possible. So you've got your crib in the wrong place, right? So you've got to slide that along, which is the position where it's. Uh, it's right in that position, you haven't got the same letter top and bottom. By taking pairs of these letters, one from the enciphered and one from the crib, you can in fact build up a logical closed loop. Something <coughs> like that, illustrated there. Doesn't matter where you start, you can build up a closed logical loop to get back to the place from which you started. <coughs> closed logical loop, and that's very important. What you then do is to plug that menu, that menu, you plug that up on the back of the machine. My colleague is going to take you around and show you that in a moment. But you plug that logical loom up on the back of the machine. And then you would set this machine going and it would click through. You'll see these drums moving around. It would go through each of those 17,500 positions, looking to see whether with those drums in that order, with that menu, and the right plugging, that could logically be possible on the Enigma machine. If it could reject it, then they would click onto the next position. And it will go on doing that until it gets to a place where it can say, well, yes, that could be a possible 
solution, and then it would stop. What you've done is, in fact, to put in an arbitrary stecker plugging. Just assume, for this purpose, the stecker plug for the input letter is going to be the letter A. Just set that arbitrarily. This machine will click through its processes, and it might find somewhere where it's, it will say, no, that cannot be A, but it can be R or M or something. But it could be logically possible. And then it would stop, and then you can then read off on those indicator drums, the position of those drums there. You could take that off, and then you would do the next second stage. You would take that information and go to the checking machine, which is a little machine at the back there. That would enable you to go through the whole of that menu, starting with that one stacker that's appeared in the little thing called the letter box down there. That's the substitute for the letter A that I was nattering about just now. It would give you a stacker start, stacker position for each of these. The checking machine will work its way around that menu, hopefully giving you the other steckers. If you've got it right, you would find a unique stacker for each of those plugs. If you've got a false stop, which you can easily get, what it's done is to say, well, yes, that's logical, pos logically possible, but I do need to use the same letter for two or more steckers. And in that case, that's not possible on the Enigma machine, so that's a false stop. But you'd only find that out when you put the whole process through the checking machine and the corner there, work your way through. If you get a false stop, then you, you carry on looking for the next one. We've got a demonstration here where it's going to stop six times. In fact, but only one of those is the correct stop. So at that time, of course, you don't know which is the right one and which is the wrong one. So it's to be the REMs on the checking machine that will find that out for you. Hopefully, if you've then got the right one, it would decipher and give you all the stickers for the whole of that message. Hopefully, but it might not give you all the stickers. You might still be one or two stickers short, but you've had to explain to you there are 10 stacker pairs, 10, 20 letters plugged up to 10 pairs on the Enigma. You might not get all of them out of this. You have to find the others by another method altogether. But once you've got that, you've got the, the right drums in the right position, you've got all the stickers, you've got the key, you can then take that onto the Typex machine, special Typex machine, British type of machine, that's been modified to mimic the Enigma. So if you've got all the settings, you can then put that message through the Typex machine and decipher the whole of the message. So it's a three-stage process. This is the first stage, then the checking machine, then the Typex. Well, I think, well um, better say the actual menu we've got plugged up here, in fact, was the, the last message sent out by Sharnhorst on Boxing Day 1943. It was um, done in a somewhat frantic manner because the Sharnhorst at that time was just about to be sunk, so they were in a bit of a hurry. But they sent that last message out, and that's the actual one we've got plugged up here on here. So we're going to run that. Okay. Oh, I'll take it off. Those of you here in Hampshire can read, you've got the letters of the alphabet down here. 